welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Ecklebarger. Here we go with the Bob Hope Show. This is episode number 278, and it originally aired on November 20th, 1945. Here now is Bob Hope with his special guest, Joe E. Brown. <laughs> rehearsal. Thank you very much. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob broadcasting for Marine Con the El Torres Hope. Well, here we are at the El Toro Marine Base. They told me El Toro would be the natural place for me to broadcast from. And there was a lot of financial activity around here. Financial activity. That's a marine term meaning wealth, prosperity, and come on, make them bounce off the wall. shake them here. I walked past the barracks and there was more of a rattle than Sinatra driving a jeep. <laughs> and the picture old man Bones, huh? On payday, the money really changes hands fast around here. In fact, I looked at a dollar bill and George Washington was wearing a chin strap on his wig to keep it from blowing off. <laughs> but there's a big campaign to merge the Army with the Navy and I finally found out why. That's the only way they can beat the Marine football team here. These fellas really have a terrific football team here. In fact, after the last game, they were rated unbeaten, untied, and uncivilized. <laughs> what a team. They don't worry about the score. After each play, the captain calls timeout and presents unconditional surrender terms. <laughs> then, of course, there's Fleet City. But I won't say... <laughs> I read the papers, too, you know. I won't say these Marines are hard to stop, but it's the first time I ever saw anybody receive a kickoff at the Los Angeles Coliseum and score a touchdown at Soldier's Field. <laughs> these boys are all from overseas, and I guess it's a little hard for them to forget that they're out of the jungle. Last week, the referee shot off his gun to start the game, and six Marines in the stands yelled, Sniper, and shot back. I'm very sorry to report, ladies and gentlemen, that due to unforeseen circumstances, Professor Colonna will not be with us tonight, and I... Hello? Well, it's about time. I've been trying to get you for three hours. How long? How long? Oh, hello, how long? Send over an order of chop suey. <laughs> Colonna, this is Bob Hope. Well, in that case, be sure to keep your fingers out of the bowl. <laughs> Professor Colonna, what happened to you? Never mind that. Tell me, Hope. Who was it who said, stone walls do not a prison make, nor iron bars a cave? Shakespeare said it. <laughs> Never got caught speeding at Santa Ana, did he? <laughs> well, Colonna, so you're arrested for speeding. Yes, Hope, and the bail is $50,000. $50,000? Where were you speeding? Away from the First National Bank. <laughs> Colonna, how will you find your way back to the nut house in this heavy fog? I'll just hold your hand. Uh, oh, I, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. I am an innocent man. Colonna, are you sure you didn't do anything wrong? Of course not, Hope. I didn't do a thing. I was just riding in the back seat of my Buick with my girl going about 30 miles an hour. You were in the back seat of your Buick with your girl going 30 miles an hour? Who was driving, Colonna? That was the discrepancy. <laughs> Couldn't you talk your way out of it? Well, I told him I worked for Bob Hope. What did he say to that? Nothing. He just smelled my breath. <laughs> I guess so. Colonna, you should be ashamed. You should be ashamed. Just be... a minute, Hope. You, I'll say you a minute. Should. Don't you dare. They're giving the woman in the next cell the third degree. I won't tell you. I won't tell you. I won't. I won't. Colonna, who was that? Miller Pierce. <laughs> Right now. Hey, look. I, I've, I've got enough of this place, Hope. I'm breaking out. Colonna, don't do it. If you break out, they'll give you ten years. Don't be silly, Hope. I'm eligible for parole. Here I go. <laughs> hey, 
They don't believe in the point system, do they? <laughs> Get a letter. In the middle of May, I met a gal named Jean. Took her out in July. And even August moon And all through sex I kept admiring her charm And all through hot We were locked in each other's arms From November to Jan The run around began February and March I was a worried man Got married in the middle of May. No, we did that. Well, <laughs> that was <laughs> that was that was skinny and a singing in the middle of May. Skin, you really made that song live. Too bad you can't do the same for yourself. Kiss me once, 
like to introduce a friend of mine and a friend of every serviceman from the outposts of the Aleutians of the Islands in the South Pacific. One of the reasons Hollywood is so proud of its contribution to the war effort, here he is, the old globetrotter himself, Joey Brown. Thank you, Bob. How are you? Joe, how do you like it here at El Toro? Oh, fine, Bob. You know, when I got here, 16 of those lady Marines all rushed up and wanted to give me a kiosk. <laughs> yes, 16 la- lady Marines wanted to give you a kiss. Did you let them kiss you? Yeah. <laughs> all at once. <laughs> yeah, all right, huh? <laughs> you warmed them up, didn't yeah. you? <laughs> You let 16 girls kiss you all at once? Oh, sure, and I still had enough pucker left over to eat a popsicle at the same time. (laughs) Yuck, I got pucker I ain't even used yet. (laughs) I know, the next time we watch the planes maneuver, please don't yawn, Joe. There's a Corsair missing here today. (laughs) Let me work this there. Right there, right there. You should talk with that control tower sticking out of your face. <laughs> control tower, huh? Yes. I'll settle for that. Some days it looks like a wind sign. E stand for? E, oh, I don't want to tell you, Bob. Oh, come on, Joe. No, I don't want what to tell you. What does the E stand for? Come on. <laughs> Eucalyptus. <laughs> Eucalyptus. Yeah. <laughs> How did you ever get a name like that? Well, when I was born, my pop looked at me and then said to the stork, You sure, Eucalyptus that time? <laughs> You work for a lot of these kids over there. They're out here at night over in the South Pacific, huh? Yeah, but they're using regular laundries there now, you know. <laughs> yeah. How'd you like Australia? Oh, fine, Joe, except for those kangaroos. How'd they ever get such huge pouches in front? Well, I don't know about that, but don't brood about it, Bob. You're too big a man for jealousy. <laughs> This is just where I keep my old scripts. But look, uh, now that you're back, what are your plans, Joe? Well, next month I'm going to start appearing in a play Harvey. Harvey? Yep, it's a sort of lost weekend with a rabbit. I play the part of a guy who thinks that a big seven-foot rabbit is following him around. He thinks a seven-foot rabbit is following him. Sounds like W.C. Fields with an Easter complex. (laughs) Tell me, Joe, how did you get your start in show business? Under the big tent. Well, so did Crosby, and he's still wearing it. So you got started in the entertainment field in the circus, huh? Yes, yeah, sir. The circus really has thrilled me, Bob. You know, I always had an ambition to be a lion tamer. You know, putting your head in the lion's mouth. Uh-huh. Never worked out. Why, what happened? Well, the lion insisted upon putting his head in my mouth. <laughs> hey, you was... <laughs> I remember you was in vaudeville. You used to do a dancing act in vaudeville. Yeah, I did, Joe. I used to dance barefoot. You used to dance barefoot? Mm-hmm. That way I could pick up the pennies without bending over. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I'll never forget those old vaudeville days, Joe. My partner and I called ourselves the Corn Brothers. I was the comedian. I wore a straw hat and a big putty nose. What'd you do, lose the hat? <laughs> I remember catching your act once, Bob. You, you look pretty jazzy telling those jokes in that red suit. Well, that wasn't really a red suit, Joe. It's just that I never found out anything to take those tomato stains out. <laughs> But I tell you what, Joe, let's give the folks a sample of the kind of stuff that used to get over in the four-day circuit. First two snappy chappies who just broke in in Sandusky, Ohio, and are now hitting the big time in Columbus. A little husky music skin. Drop the net. Okay, let's go. The following is not only the answer to who killed Vaudeville, but the reenactment of the crime. 
just like General Custer when he crossed the Delaware. And we will entertain you with our songs and funny facts. In Clipson Snobby answers, you will find ourselves. My class, I love my wife, but oh, you kids, get out and go to Grand. Oh, we play all of the Clipson Snobby and go to Maine. We're going to get out of every town, but never miss a train. And we wouldn't hit our grandma with a shovel, because it's mean. Oh, this walk of life is certainly king. I'm in a quandary. Oh, this walk of life is certainly king. Send out your laundry. But if you're happy, you're a millionaire. <laughs> if you're happy, you're a millionaire. Yes, we said it. Thing happened to me on the way to the theater tonight. A bum stopped me and he wanted a dollar for his 80 year old mother. Did you give it to him? Gosh, no. What would I want with his 80 year old mother? <laughs> All right. All classy stuff right from New York. Now let me see. I got one for you, Joe. What did Dick Tracy say when he put on the long underwear? I give up. What did Dick Tracy say when he put on the long underwear? I'm sure to get itchy this time. Yes, <laughs> Real old time Mr. Boy. Do it, boy. <laughs> chicken cross the road. Well, uh, why ask me? I ain't no rooster. <laughs> uh, uh, say no. <laughs> you, 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 you was flirting with that waitress down there in that restaurant. Did you see that waitress down there, man? Yeah, yeah, you was flirting with her. I was flirting with that waitress. You wasn't doing anything else. Well, well, that, no. That's bad. I know, that, but I was playing for big steaks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> What did you do when you was in the army? I was a mule driver. You you was a mule driver? <laughs> yeah, driver. I was driving. <laughs> yeah, so you was a mule driver? I was one of those. Yes, sir. <laughs> I drove him for five years. I never want to see a jackass again. <laughs> Boy, you is going to have trouble shaving. Yeah. Did we go? No, I only weighed three pounds when I was born. Is that so? Did you live? Yeah. <laughs> Did I live, man? You want to see me now? <laughs> yeah, now a couple of Dutch comics. Run us down, Mr. Leader. Uh, uh, say, Schultz. Say, my Well, if it isn't something there, well, well look at here. Well, I'm a dirty name. Well, cheese and crackers, they are. Look at that. <laughs> Jules, can you tell me who discovered America? America? I, no, my, I didn't even know it was lost. <laughs> my, I want to invite you to a big party at our house Saturday night. Sure, Schultz. What's the big event? My sister's coming out. Oh, wonderful. What's she been in for? <laughs> hey, Schultz, tell me something. Is oysters healthy? I never heard one complain. <laughs> You look tonight. What you got on your hair that makes it look so oh, nice? Oh, that is sour cloud juice there. <laughs> is that the truth? Sour cloud juice on the hair there. Sour cloud juice on your hair? Right on my noggin there. Well, is that so? Yes. How, how do you comb the hair? <laughs> Mittavini. <laughs> Give it to me, <laughs> Mr. Vini, but a box of Snickers to that. Uh, <laughs> oh. Maya. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Maya, give it to me a sentence with the word issue. Uh, uh, a sentence with the word issue? Yeah. Uh, I got it. People of the radio audience, if you are still listening, <laughs> my issue. <laughs> That's, That's why we say. In the shade I love the shade of the old apple tree. Of the old apple tree. There's a lot Francis Langford and Skinny Ennis and his orchestra. Here we go with Francis singing Close as Pages in a Book. My name and I So close We can share a single name Share every song So close that before I hear you laugh My
the wells run dry And each mountain disappears I'll be there for you To care for you Through laughter and through tears So take my heart Joseph Evans Brown was born in 1891. By the age of 10, he was part of a traveling troupe of circus tumblers called the Five Marvelous Ashtons. When he was old enough, he began playing professional baseball. He had a chance to sign with the New York Yankees, but instead chose to focus on being an entertainer. After years in vaudeville and on Broadway, he began making movies in 1928. 
He made dozens of movies in the 1930s, after which Brown spent much of World War II entertaining the troops. His film career slowed after the war. His best-known post-war role was that of aging millionaire Osgood Fielding III in Billy Wilder's 1959 comedy Some Like It Hot, which also starred Tony Curtis and Jack Lemmon and Marilyn Monroe. Fielding falls for Daphne, who was played by Jack Lemmon in drag. At the end of the film, Lemmon takes off his wig and reveals to Brown that he is a man, to which Brown responds, well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> that is one of the most famous film punchlines. Ranks up there with, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Joe E. Brown died in 1973 at the age of 81. Please send your questions and comments to host at classiccomedyotr.com. Come back next Wednesday for another episode of The Pepsodent Show starring Bob Hope and check in on Friday for the next installment of The Life of Riley. Until we meet again in the words of Mark Twain, censorship is telling a man he can't have a steak just because a baby can't chew it. <laughs>